Um, inviting me here to represent the Museum of Chincoteague Island. Can I just ask how many people have actually been in the museum? So I, a few. I would encourage you, you know, take a trip out to Chincoteague. I hope um, I can encourage you after tonight to maybe make that journey to come over and see us. So just a little backstory first. Um, the museum opened in 1972. It was really the, the women on Chincoteague that wanted the history of the island to be preserved. They were concerned that the way of life was changing and if we didn't preserve it and save it, the next generation wouldn't understand what the life was like on the island, the working watermen and all that. Um, they did a bunch of grassroots fundraising to create the museum um, and through a lot of hard work in several years they opened the doors in 1972. Originally it was the Oyster Museum, some of you might remember that, um, but then over the years they realized you know what we have in there to tell the story isn't just about that seafood industry, it's about the whole history of the island. So we expanded the building itself and we added new exhibits on um, everything from prehistoric life uh, to present day. We've got a great exhibit with, um, we had decoys and the lighthouse lens and a new addition to the building uh, complex is the Miles Hancock workshed. That was brought over a few years ago. It was donated to the museum by the family that owned uh, the property. Um, it was restored. It was set up so that you actually walk in and it looks like you're walking into Miles' shop and he's just gone out to catch a turtle or something. He's not there, but um, it's been a great uh, resource for us because, well, you can just walk in when nobody's in there and see that look, that feel of being in a workshop. But also we um, have had carvers come in. Um, maybe some of you have been there to carve. That way when the tourists come in and they're all curious, you know, what is the life of a decoy carver? They can actually see someone in their carving. Uh, this past winter, we just had the, the building completely uh, restored. Um, so it's is it, as good as new. Um, so I do encourage you to come back and see it. Another thing that you could possibly do is help us tell that story. So if any of you are interested in being a carver coming in the shop and, and being there for the public to you know answer those questions, we absolutely would love for you to do that. That's one way we can kind of work together. Um, the museum is also doing a few things. Um, Tuesday night lecture series is something it's very wide open on who comes to speak and what their topics are, anything from an artist to somebody from a rocket lab talking about what NASA's up to, to carvers. Um, that's another opportunity um, that we would love for you guys to help us kind of just spread the story about what a decoy carver's life is like. Um, more and more people that come into the museum have no idea about any of that. Um, so of course we, like you, want to keep that story alive. So maybe that's another way that we can work together. Um, back on the table, let me just mention before I forget, I put this month's activities um, out there. Just if you're curious what's going on, of course, these are all online on our newsletter and on our website. Um, our big thing right now is that we are trying to save the BB Ranch. Um, originally, uh, the ranch was over 100 acres, and if you're not familiar with the BB Ranch, um, Misty of Shinkatig, the story um, revolves around this little pony and the family that owned her, the BBs. Um, over time, the grandma and grandpa BB pass away. They have you know, a boatload of children, and the land is kind of divided up amongst their kids. But the, the main section where most of the activities and the stories um, has been saved. It has not been sold. It's been contained um, just over 10 acres. Um, it came up that this year that the people who own it, Barbara and Billy, they need to sell it. Um, they're getting older. They can't maintain the ranch anymore. They've reached out to the museum to see if we could possibly buy it and preserve it for the future. So we are having a major um, fundraising uh, uh, this last month. It's been just a whirlwind. We only have a couple months to save to raise $625,000. <laughs> I'm not even going to ask you for a penny, but um, I will tell you that if any of you are on social media, um, I I'd love for you to share this story. That will get us more than anything else. Share it, share it, share it. 
Um, last time I checked, which was yesterday, we had already collected $160,000 in two weeks. So that's a story that has impressed people a lot um, around the world and meant something to so many kids. So we're grateful for that. So if you can help us kind of spread the word, um, that would be wonderful. We do have something in the museum also um, that we hope that you can help us with, with ideas, with loans, with assistance to create. Um, we did have a wonderful exhibit in the front of our foyer when you came in the museum. It was a big open space. We had um, a very large collection of decoys in there and work boats. Um, most of those items, um, almost 100%, were on loan, and we had to return most of those this past fall. So we are lacking in decoys in the museum. So we would like to set up another exhibit. Um, in fact, there's two areas that we're working on. One would be on the working decoy carver, um, and then another area would be more like the, um, the outlaw gunner kind of thing. Um, those two exhibits are kind of in limbo until we can get some artifacts. So um, on loan, if you guys are interested in talking to me about something that you could offer us on loan to be put in those exhibits, we would love to talk to you. Um, we'd also love some assistance in even setting up these exhibits and, and making sure that they're accurate and all that. So we want to partner with you on these type of activities. You're the perfect person for us. I mean, you're the experts in the field. I mean, this is like a walking history book in here of Eastern Shore history. So we would love to partner with you guys um, on these projects. We also have an opportunity in our gift, gift shop. We try to only carry local artwork, um, local books, things like that. We one time sold little miniature decoys in there. Um, that individual's passed away. Um, so if anybody in here does miniatures, we would love to talk to you about maybe having a partnership and buying some of your um, decoys to sell in our gift shop. Um, what else do I need to talk to you guys about? Have any questions while I'm thinking about what I forgot? Anybody have any? I got a couple. Yeah. Um, like if the club did like a loan, um, what kind of like length of time would you be thinking? And so some exhibits are for the season. So if you wanted to set something up, but you only wanted us to have it for the year, I would say that's a possibility. Sometimes people, that, you know, you take the time to make this wonderful exhibit. You don't want to remove it after a year. We could extend it five years or. Is there security for that kind of thing? We have we have ample insurance first of all. Plus the building itself is um, has a security system. Um, ADT, we also have cameras and all that inside, but we have ample insurance. So if, if some disaster happened, or let's say somebody burglar comes in and steals all their decoys, we have coverage for that. And also, uh, you mentioned Moss Hancock. Do you all, you had a lot of cool makers from Shigate. Do you, do you have anything? Most everything that you're thinking of had to be returned. Okay. Most of those all came from the refuge system, and most of those we returned. So um, we, would, we would love to have a, f a full story of at least the Shinkati carvers, if not others. Um, we don't have any of those right now. So okay. it's a big, it's a void in the museum that we really want to fill. Currently, where you're, I mean, do you have any endowments or full-time funding, or how does that work? We do have some endowments. Um, we do have some resources of income. We don't rely solely on um, door admission, although that's pretty robust. Um, we also sponsor the Road Scholar Program. Um, it's 30-some-odd uh, programs a year where uh, adults come in a group to Chincoteague and learn about the Eastern Shore and the island and all that. We get a lot of funding from that. Um, but we do have some funds to play with for creating displays. We could even purchase some of these decoys on our own, but um, that would take time, I'm sure, to get a full collection. But Is we are. The Elder Hostel thing? Yeah. Used to be Elder Hostel. They've changed the name. Yeah, Too many that. people didn't want to be called Elder. Or hostile. So that BB so. <laughs> Ranch, do you think the goal is pretty realistic that you'll be able to buy it? I, 
you ever heard of manifesting? I've manifested it. It's happening. I just, I'm planning for it to happen. There's just no going back. I have too many people. What was that? I have a couple projects at my house if you can manifest it. I'll manifest it. Um, we have gone too far, I think. I'm speaking for myself, not for the museum. Um, so many people are cheering us on, and we do, we get donations big and small every day. This is not. Um, I said in a, a press release, it's like a colossal grassroots movement. It really is. I mean, this is a major, major thing. Does the town help you all at all? The town is having a meeting with the uh, museum this week on how, ways they can help, and the fire department's also having a meeting. I mean, that we only announced I mean, that we're overall, not just for the piece of for the BB branch. Are they helping the museum? Yeah. We do get a little money from the town. It's about five thousand dollars a year, and they'll support us with like if if I call and need like a new driveway put in, they'll come out with their crew people to help us. So that's you know whatever that value is, but they are supportive a little bit. Yeah. Yep, they're planning a fundraising. I mean, to be fair, we only announced that we wanted to do this fundraiser, I think, 14 days ago. So they are working on ways to help. Yeah. But we don't have long. Um, we've been given about a two-month window. It was one month. It's been extended now to two months. Um, they probably would extend it a little bit longer than that, but it's um, they don't want to wait six months for this to be completed. They like to get you know get it settled up before them. So we're just praying, wishing, social media, and all that. Um, I've got the two things back there. This is just a QR code. You can scan it with your phone, and it opens up, and it gives you all the information on the auction and how to donate. How many acres are you trying to save? 10.3 acres. How much? 625. That's counting the buildings. Mm-hmm. The house and all. I mean, the price on Chincoteague has gone up. We could talk real estate. My husband's an expert. <laughs> um, uh, a quarter acre lot on Chincoteague, right? This will blow your mind. Is going for like a hundred thousand up. 150. So uh, 625 for this 10 acre historic parcel is is pretty good price. Yeah. And I will say, since we've been in the talks with them to buy it, they have had two bona fide offers from developers for a million dollars. Cash. Wow. Sir. <laughs> Tell them who you've been talking to. Who? Media. Oh, oh. Two days ago. I was on ABC News yesterday. I've talked to many. We've spread the word. We've put the word out. And people, like maybe you know somebody who is uh, on NBC or whatever, people who I don't even know are contacting people in the media and saying, you've got to talk to them right now. And so I've been getting calls from all over. So we're definitely trying. Um, so please let me know how we can support each other. We want to keep um, the, the, just the art of the decoy carver alive. Uh, we do classes. We don't do enough. We'd like to do more classes. We'd like to sponsor, um, get people involved in uh, decoy carving that maybe couldn't afford to do it. Maybe you guys could help us um, with scholarships of that sort. Um, but whatever you guys think of that you think is appropriate, we want to support you, and it comes back to support us. So it's a, it's a team that we're looking for. Anybody else? Well, enjoy your dinner. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Thank you.